Welcome to GraphicDesignerTips.com. Uh, thank you for joining us for this video tutorial. Uh, if you're on our website or if you're on YouTube, uh, make your way over to our website. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff on there, um, and we're just getting started. So, what I want to speak about today is I just want to break this. Uh, this is my um, this is my category on my website called Break It Down, and I'm really just going to break down this. Uh, this flyer right now and show you what goes into making a professional looking uh, you know flyer for you know whether it be your business or one of your clients business um, I'm hoping by now uh, that your business is all set up and you're ready to tackle some clients so um, because you know that is the best thing when you can finally get your business up and going and you know you can start to really build your portfolio through actual works that are being printed and actual works that are you know they're in they're out in the mainstream so um, you know I get referrals off of work because people saw a flyer I designed for somebody or a business card and they like the professionalism of it uh, what's happening nowadays is you know everybody uh, thinks this whole this whole uh, you know Vista print stuff is uh, you know and templated type of artwork is taking over but what's really happening is you got uh, you know a couple hundred of the same or even different uh, categories of businesses running around with the same types of with the same photos on their cards so uh, you know the custom graphic designer in my eyes is never going to die uh, we're always going to be around and we're always going to have work so um, on the screen right now is a is a uh, flyer I have designed uh, I think I said this already for a client of mine and uh, they're called on target painting and they are a painting uh, company obviously and uh, I'm just gonna kinda show you what goes into break uh, into this flyer by breaking it down a little bit and um, and that's really it so uh, I'm gonna zoom out of here real quick this is an eight and a half by eleven flyer uh, there are three images uh, in this flyer okay uh, you can see them when I come over here to my links and these images are all these images are all linked okay and uh, in some cases I rename my images uh, they're still named iStock photo uh, uh, on here because I, I do purchase all of my images from iStock and um, in a lot of cases if I have to do um, if I have to do heavy work on an image that's when I'll change the name of it uh, in this case, I just link to the basic images that I purchased uh, after I came into uh, Photoshop and changed them to CMYK. So I want to make sure your images are CMYK, obviously, uh, because if they are not, uh, you're going to have issues uh, when you go to a printer and they start to print. So I'm going to get out of my links real quick. And just so you can see, because uh, these images down here repeat a lot, that's why you saw a lot of extra links. But this image is actually like a clipping mask and I'm going to drag this image over here okay to our new document and if I actually went to control and release that that's the actual image it's just in a clipping mask now so uh, I'm going to undo that and I'm going to send that to the back and why is that oh that's why that is okay all right, well, good now. So, um, what I like to do is before I like to make sure I always have an extra amount of bleed near the end of the project. So, in the beginning, I'll make sure my clipping mask is right to the edge, so I don't see that bleed because it kind of uh, it's kind of disrupts my uh, my view of the whole canvas. It you know, it's uh, it's something that I definitely don't want to see. So, uh, I come over here, and you know, in this case, I'm going to change the font. Um, you know, see what we can come up with here. Let's change it around a little bit. On target, I'm going to make this again by doing the word painting. And this font has no weight to it. Uh, there's, you know, there's no importance on this words right now. So we're gonna make this a nice heavy font. Um, I don't. I'm maybe I'll even resort to doing an impact because everybody has impact and everybody, you see impact everywhere. But it's pretty cool. So. I'm just gonna do this right now, and I'm gonna add some uh, some life to this, right? By uh, double clicking, uh, selecting both of these, copying, and then instead of pasting it with Command V, I'm gonna hit Command B as in boy, actually, or as in back, because it's going to make a copy right in back of the on-target painting. So I'm going to. It's still filled with black, 
and even if I filled it with red, you're not gonna see it because it's behind it. So I am going to add a stroke on this uh, that is white, and there we go. And you can't see it unless I zoom in. Um, you still can't see it. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a stroke, and you're gonna really see it when I add a shadow on it. So I like to do that a lot with, with text. I like to add shadows on stuff. That's a very subtle shadow. I like that. It's very basic. Uh, I might even come over here and round my corners on the stroke. Uh, da, da, da. It's right here. It's right there. No, it's right there. All right, cool. Um, ba, 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 ba. Zoom out of here. So now I got my headline. It looks nice. Uh, maybe even throw a gradient in there if I really wanted to have some fun. And uh, all right, let's see. Select all these right here, and this is an element that I just kind of put together. And I'm going to copy that element over by hitting Option. Kind of, it's kind of like a like a like a bullseye. Uh, what I actually did in here is I hit it by creating a white box around it. I can also make a clipping mask and use the Pathfinder uh, tool on this on this shape right here, this vectorized shape. But uh, you know, in this case, I'm just kind of doing the quick fix, and you know, it still comes out looking good without having that clipping mask, you know, as long as it's hidden. So obviously, when I make my bleed, I'm going to move that white box over in the end. But right there, we're, we're going to leave it there for now. And uh, this is just some text. Um, now, if you notice, I'm sticking with two fonts in here. Uh, I'm a big advocate of using only two fonts in the artwork. Um, so if you know you want to use the font that you're using in your headline, uh, even if you're using a logo, you can have the main company name is one font, a serif font, and you can change the other font to like a sans serif. Sans serif meaning no serif on it. So uh, originally, uh, I created, let me select all this text in here, and I created a text box right here and I threw all this text in here. But there's one thing I didn't like about that. I didn't like the fact that it was going over the edge like that. And the next problem I had with this was, well, you know, I have this whole area right here. I kind of want to fill everything. I want everything to work with each other because if you look with at how the final ad is, watch my mouse. It's your, re, your eyes are going just like this. All right, left, you're going straight down the piece, okay? You're not getting lost. You're not getting to any dead ends where your eyes get tracked off the whole page. Uh, you know, it's keeping you within the page. So uh, what I'm gonna do here with this text box, which I've spoken about in another tutorial about using text, uh, or select my, excuse me, my selection tutorial, um, I'm going to pull this out, and you're gonna notice that all the text in there starts to, uh, you know, it starts to fill to the end. And what I actually can even take a step further is I can add a point by hitting the plus on the keyboard. It's gonna go right to the plus on the point. I'm gonna add an anchor point, and now I'm gonna come to my direct selection by hitting the letter A. I'm gonna pull this guy in just a little bit, and then I'm gonna do the convert anchor point tool. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff here. Convert anchor point tool, which is shift C, and I'm going to round that out. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure without a doubt that that image is, is that type is wrapping around that image at a uh, at a rounded um, in like a, in a rounded shape type of a way. So I'm going to I'm just gonna select all these guys right here. All right, and I'm going to pull these over. Okay, and basically. What did I miss here? I missed something. All right, I missed the edge of that. I built this. I built this shape in the background, kind of like a funky way, but it works. So, and it looks good. All right, cool. All right, um, and then I just made these bullet points here. Not good. Uh, I made these bullet points here by. Um, by typing these out and then using my align tools, uh, which I've spoken about in another article, um, tutorial, excuse me. Um, I'm looking at my battery on my computer right now. I got about 9% left. See, I'm in the outside room right now, so 
I don't have my uh, my thing plugged in, but we'll be good. Um, this other image, uh, I'm just gonna leave the, I don't have it in a clipping mask right now, uh, which would hide that crop space, so I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm just kinda doing that by eye. And select both of these, right click, clip, make clipping mask. And I'm just gonna copy these over, but after I do that, I'm gonna show you, I don't know where that, that went. I'm going to pull these bad boys over. And I made sure all these elements right here are lined up perfectly. So if I hit my align tool, all right, all right, it was off just a bit, but that's fine. Um, what I could even, what you can even do is you can select this first element, pull your rulers up by hitting Command R and pulling a ruler right to that middle transform box, okay? Now, you make sure your rulers are on by going to View, um, View Show Rulers, where is it? Hide Rulers, which is Command R, or Show Rulers, which is, uh, which is Command R. <laughs> Um, you can hide your rules after you make the rules from your rulers by hitting command and then the semicolon, all right? And that's gonna make it disappear or reappear. You could also do that by coming up here and hiding guides. You see, command semicolon and hitting it again will turn it off. So now that I have it on, I'm going to make sure, yep, my transform boxes are correct on here. And I'm gonna select these three elements and I'm just going to move these over a little bit to the right. All right, and that is lined up. Let's make sure this guy is over a little bit. Fix that just a little bit. And then as long as these bullets are all together and they're nice and neat, what you could do is you could select all of these and kind of just uh, move everything over. And you know, it's, it's more of that feeling of knowing that everything is the way that you want it, uh, the fact that you have everything lined up the way that you want it. So um, that's it on breaking this, on breaking this professional uh, advertisement down. I would then add the bleeds on here, kind of like over here, and then we would PDF this, send the client a proof, and once it's approved, it gets sent over right to the printer. So uh, again, this is graphicdesignertips.com, visit us. Uh, on our website, uh, the way it sounds is the way it's spelt. Uh, you can actually also, if you're on YouTube, click a link right below the video to get to this, uh, to get to our website and then view our uh, all our latest tutorials. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I appreciate all the comments and feedback, and uh, have a good night. Peace.